Hi, in this video, we shall be discussing remainder and factor theorem as well as cubic equation, which is a part of this topic on algebraic polynomials. The question goes, it is given that 3x plus k is a factor of this polynomial of 81x to the power of 4 minus 6x cubed minus away 9k square x square minus away 11x minus 35 over 9. You are to show that this expression is being reduced to 2k cubed plus 33k minus 35 equals to 0. And that's a 2 marks question. And in part B of the question, you are to show that the equation 2a cubed plus 33k minus 35 equals to 0 has only one real roots for all real values of k. Now, you might want to pause this video to give this question a try and when you're ready, keep watching. Now let us begin this question. First off, the question states that 3x plus k is a factor. So we might want to first revise on the factor theorem. So by factor theorems, in this case, we are referring to ax plus b is a factor of the polynomial px, p of x, if and only if p of negative b over a equals to zero. So what this means is that if ax plus b is a factor, now we can set ax plus b to be equal to zero, ax equals to negative b, and x will therefore be a negative b over a. Now what happens is that if ax plus b is a factor, we place all the x's to be a negative b over a. And that's the remainder will actually give us a zero in order for it to be a factor. Now, moving on to this question is that we are given a poly polynomial that is not defined yet. So to apply the polynom polynomial or remainder and factor theorem, we have to define all polynomials. And so in part A, what we are going to do is we first define the polynomial in the questions by letting fx be it. After which, since you are told that 3x plus k is a factor, so the next step of doing it is therefore setting 3x plus k to be equal to 0. x will therefore be a negative k over 3. So replacing all the x to be a negative k over 3, like this. If it's a factor, the remainder must be a 0. So in this case, the question says it's a factor, so we set the remainder to be equal to 0. So what happens is that we place all x to be negative k over 3 into the original polynomials. So therefore, we have our terms like this, replacing every single x to be a negative k over 3 as seen in the yellow highlighted terms. And on the right side, our remainder will therefore be equals to 0. Now, as you can see here, we have a string of terms, in this case consisting of k's and numbers or constants. So what we'll do next is to simplify all this by keying it into our calculator, giving us this result. So what happens is that you can see that from k to the power of 4 here, minus away k to the power of 4, the k to the power of 4 will no longer exist. That means to say we are officially left with a k cube, a k, and a constant. So it would be good if we can check if we are in the right direction. And yes, indeed, we are in the right direction. Now, take note that the coefficient of k cube over here is a 2. And the coefficient of k cube over here is 2 over 9. That means to say that we can proceed by multiplying by 9 throughout this entire equation. So if we multiply by 9 throughout this entire equation, we will end up be having this statement. So 2 over 9 multiplied by 9 should give us 2k cubed. 11 k over 3 multiplied by 9 should give us a positive 33k and negative 35 over 9 multiplied by 9 should give us a negative 35 and there we have it we have shown this required sentence or statement all right now let us move on to part b of the question in part b we are supposed to show that the equation which essentially is the same equation here has only one real root now, by only one real root, we are referring to only one real solution. So rightfully, if this is a k-cube equation, it should actually have up to three real roots. All right, it should actually have up to three real roots. So in this case, when they say that this equation has only one real root, that means um, there will be one quadratic factor that has no real roots. 
That means to say that later on, we might need to use a discriminant, which is a b squared minus 4ac, and prove that it is less than 0. So, before we start on the solution, now let's move on to the steps to solving cubic equations on the left side of the screen. So let me shift this thing up. Now, to solve the, to solve the cubic equations, we first start off by having in step 1, finding the positive and negative factors of the constant term. This is something like solving quadratic equation via the uh, cross factorization method whereby we use a constant term to decide one of the two of the factors in this case so in this case we're going to solve a cubic equation by looking at the constant term by investigating and listing out the positive and negative factors of it later on and in step two we need to show that one of these factors just one of them is a factor by factor theorem so by factor theorem recall in the previous um, notes here is that our remainder must be equal to zero if the remainder if it's, if it's equal to zero it is a factor theorem so next moving on to the next step three we will have to solve or find the remaining quadratic factor so a power of three equations will have three factors so if we can find one of the factors out that means to say we should have another two linear factors or one quadratic factor so we find the remaining quadratic factor by a long division methods or comparing coefficients using a polynomial polynomial identity in this case and in step four in step four we will factorize the quadratic factor okay by either the cross factorization or the quadratic formula so factorizing the quadratic factor even only if it has real roots if there are no real roots then we need to use the discriminant methods to show that the discriminant is less than zero proving that it is no real roots which is the case for this question and lastly for step five to solve the quadratic equation by or cubic equation in this case by equating each factor to zero and solve and so these are the steps involved in solving a cubic equation now let us begin off this question by in part b show this equation which is essentially this equation so this equation or this expression actually now consists of the term or variable k the unknown k so now we need to redefine this thing to be g of k so redefining this would therefore be letting g of k in this case because k is the variable unknown here so g of k to be the same thing that we have in our part a answer so after which we can then go on to this step whereby listing out the let me just shoot this thing up so we can go on to list out in step one the factors of the constant term in blue so over here in blue here the constant term is a negative 35 so the constant term is a negative 35 the positive and negative factors of 35 or negative 35 in this case it's plus minus 1 plus minus 5 and plus minus 7 because this two product will actually give us 35 plus minus 1 and plus minus 35 because the product of these two factors will actually give us a 35 so once we are done with the step one, we can then proceed to the step two by showing that one of this factor is a factor theorem. So over here, what we usually do is usually by a trial and error method in this case. Now we might want to start out with the plus minus ones. So after, after the trial and error methods, we should have at least one factor out. That means to say that if you replace k to be a one in this case, if you replace k to be a one in this case, replace all the k's to be a 1 like this, replace all the k's to be a 1 like this, and you should be saying that this is actually a 2 plus 33 minus 35, and that g of 1 is indeed equal to 0. So g of 1 is indeed equal to 0. So when the remainder is a 0 like this, that means to say that g of 1 is a factor, and rewriting out properly, we should be writing that k minus 1 is a factor of g of k. Because if we set this thing to be equal to 0, k will therefore be equal to 1. So k minus 1 is indeed a factor of g of k. The reason being, it has a remainder of 0. So once you are done with step 2, we can then proceed to step 3 by finding the remaining quadratic factor using either the long division or the identity. Now I prefer to use the identity method because the long division methods 
um, has a higher tendency of making careless mistakes because of all of the negative signs. So over here, I'm going to proceed by going on to the uh, identity methods. So by the identity, identity method, it means to say we are going to compare the coefficients of k cubed, which is very easy to compare, as well as the constant in this case. So comparing coefficients of k cubed as well as the constants. So let me just highlight this. So constant in this case. So by that, it means to say that if we have the first factor out k minus 1 from the previous step, the other one, the other factor, we are left with a quadratic. So for the quadratic, so we ask ourselves, how do we get 2k cubed from k? Now, it is obvious that if I have 2k cubed, if I divide it by k, I will have a 2k squared. It also means to say that 2k squared multiplied by k, we will get a 2k cubed. Now, we can do this for the highest power. It would be very straightforward, as well as the lowest power, which is the constant. Now, let's take a look at the constant here. If I have a negative 35 here, how, how do I get a negative 35 from a negative 1? So that means to say that I must have a negative 1 multiplied by a positive 35 here to give us a negative 35. So it is very easy to compare the highest power and the constants. So it is very easy to compare the highest power, which is in this case the coefficient of k cubed and a constant. Now, the one in the middle, the middle term in the quadratic factor is not that straightforward. So um, I'm going to let it be a bk when b is a coefficient of k in the quadratic factor. So the next step also involves a part of the uh, polynomial identity by doing a comparison. So in the next step, I'm going to compare coefficient of k squared. So over here, if I'm to compare the coefficient of k squared, as you can see here, there is no k squared at all in the original polynomial. So there is no k squared. So if there's no k squared here, I'm going to write it as a zero. But is there a k squared over here? Actually, we have. Okay, so you might want to start off by writing it like this. The first arrow over here refers to k multiplied by bk to give us a bk squared. So the coefficient of k squared is a b from the first arrow expansion. And the second arrow expansion, what we have here is that a negative 1 multiplied by 2k squared will actually give us a negative 2k squared. So the coefficient from the second arrow expansion will actually be a negative 2. So there is no other possible way to get a coefficient of k squared out of this combination because what I did was I used the term that is a power of 1 here in a bracket to expand it out or rather a partial expansion and that is not possible. So we use this thing and we have used this thing to get k squared and there is simply no other way to get k squared out of this expansion. So we know that Solving for this, 0 equals to b minus 2. Now we clearly tell that b is equal to 2. So if b is equal to 2 here, what we do next is to rewrite the g of k equation. So rewriting the g of k equation by replacing b to be a 2 like this. So as you can see here, we have the first linear factor from the previous steps and a second quadratic factor like this from, and this process is known as comparing or doing a polynomial identity here, comparing coefficients like this. So once we are done with step three, we can then proceed on to step four by factorizing this. So as we can see here, we can either do a cross factorization or use a quadratic formula or even a completing the square. We can see here, it is not possible to do it this way. You can use a calculator, your quadratic equation mode to do a simple check before we dive straight in. So if it's not possible to solve this out or factorize this, then what do we do next? Well, we have to indicate the number of factors. So let me just shift this thing up. So simply put it this way, in this case, what happens if um, to solve for this question, we first set g of k to be equal to zero, and the first factor we have is a k minus one. Let me just put it in. The first factor that we have is a k minus one like this. All right, k minus one equals to zero. So k equals to one. All right, so that, so that is my first factor like this. And what happens if I'm gonna have my second factor in this case, which is a quadratic factor. So the second factor, quadratic factor for this case, what will happen is very simply put it, I'm gonna set this to be equal to zero. So when I set this to be equal to zero, I will have this results. 
okay so as we found earlier in our calculator we cannot factorize or we cannot use a quadratic formula simply put it this way is because of discriminant so from this i'm going to write a discriminant by discriminant we are referring to the b square minus 4ac so over here for discriminant i'm going to have a b squared which is a 2 squared minus 4a which is a 2 from here c which is a 35 from here now keying the calculator out we can tell that the discriminant is actually a negative 276 which is less than zero if discriminant is less than zero it just simply means to say that there is no real roots for this quadratic factor i'm referring to this quadratic factor now since there is one answer or one solution that means this is one real root and there is no real root or there is no real solution so for this entire g of k or this entire equation here there is only one real root so let me finish up by doing a quick conclusion like this k equals to one which is from here is the only real roots for the original equation for all real values of k in this case and that's the answer for this question thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one